Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything I know about WordPress sitemaps, including how to automatically generate a sitemap for your WordPress website without a plugin, how to do the same thing with a plugin, and how to submit your sitemap to Google so that Google knows exactly what your website looks like as far as pages and posts are concerned. So if that's something you wanna learn how to do, let's go ahead and hop right on into it. We're gonna be using my WordPress website at tonyflorida.me for this tutorial. And what we're gonna do first is check the version of WordPress that we're running because as of WordPress version 5.5, which is pretty much late 2020, December 2020, Word sitemaps are a part of WordPress. They're built into WordPress. You no longer need a plugin to generate a, 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 a sitemap for your WordPress website. So let's go ahead and check the WordPress version and we can do that inside of tools and then site health. In Insight health, you'll see two tabs here. Click on the info tab at the top and under the WordPress section, when we expand that, we'll see that I am currently running version 5.6, which is 5.5 or above. So that means there is automatically a sitemap installed and being generated, not installed, being generated for this WordPress website. So how do we access that? Well, the default sitemap is at your domain name slash WP dash sitemap.xml. And here it is, that's what that looks like. And while we're up here, you can also access this at your domain name slash sitemap.xml and that'll redirect you to wp-sitemap.xml. So what is a sitemap? It is an XML uh, structure kind of like HTML. It's a markup language that is basically just a, a listing of your pages and your posts on your website. So we have one main sitemap here, uh, which is linking to other child sitemaps underneath that. So this one is showing all of our posts, all of our pages, all of the categories, and then all the users who are authors on our website. So let's just take a look at a couple here. If we click on the posts sitemap, uh, we can see that we have two posts on this website, um, hello world and 10 reasons to like, comment, and subscribe. So, um, and if we click on one of these, it'll take us to those actual blog posts. And this is exactly what Google is gonna do when it uh, reads your sitemap. And I'll show you how to submit the sitemap to Google in a second. It's gonna come into your sitemap understand how your directory, understand how your website is laid out, and then uh, know immediately that these blog posts exist. So when you do add a new blog post, that new blog post is going to be added to your sitemap. And then once you submit it to Google, Google's going to, within a reasonable amount of time, know that that new blog post has been written. So um, that's kind of how that works. Uh, we'll just look at one more here, the pages sitemap. So we have three pages, sample page, the home page, and uh, the blog page. So knowing that there's a couple other things I wanna show you just to make sure you're aware of them about sitemaps. So there's also another file in here um, in the root of your website called robots.txt. And robots.txt uh, does a couple things, but in this case, I just wanna point out the fact that robots.txt does have a link to your sitemap. So in a sense, it's kind of redundant to submit your sitemap to Google, but it's never gonna hurt, okay? So it's something that I always do for all of my websites and it's um, it's a good thing to explicitly do that. So something I recommend. Um, and robots.txt is not a WordPress specific thing. It's a, it's a standard across many different types of websites. So um, just wanna make you guys aware of that. The last thing I wanna show you, and um, this is kind of a no brainer, but I wanna make sure that you understand if you are first starting out, you haven't released your website to the public yet, and you're still developing it, you might have the setting in under settings, under reading, uh, checked down here called discourage search engines from indexing this site. So if you have that checked and you haven't published formally your website to the public, you won't have access to your sitemap. So if you try to access the sitemap right now with that checkbox selected, we will get a 404 error that that page cannot be found. And you know, same thing for sitemap.xml. Um, we need to uh, have search engine visibility turned on by unchecking this, and then our sitemaps will be generated. And just to confirm that's the case, uh, with that unchecked, we can see our sitemap yet again. Okay, so what if you don't have version 5.5 of WordPress and you have something below that? then you might need to use a plugin. Well, you will need to use a plugin to generate your sitemap. Um, what I recommend for that is Yoast SEO. It not only allows you to automatically generate a sitemap without configuring the plugin at all, you just simply have to install it and it'll activate or install it, activate it, and it'll automatically generate a sitemap for you. Um, very easy. It also allows you to 
add meta descriptions to your blog post, which is something that WordPress is lacking right now. Um, I'm hoping to see that in a future version of WordPress, but it's like a fundamental feature to have those meta descriptions, which is basically the snippet that you'll see in Google search results. Um, so for that reason, I still use Yoast, but um, it's always good to know that this sitemap built-in functionality is being added to WordPress uh, because that's a step forward and uh, as far as SEO is concerned, search engine optimization. Anyway, I, I ramble. Um, let me show you how to submit your sitemap to Google. We're gonna submit it to something called Google Search Console if you're not familiar. I actually have a full video on um, integrating uh, this plugin that we're gonna look at, SiteKit. Okay, so we have a plugin here called, uh, in the install plugins called Sitekick by Google. And this is an official Google plugin, which allows you to take your WordPress website and uh, integrate it with different Google services. So one of those is Google Analytics, and that allows you to understand how your users are interacting with your website, where they're coming from, how long they're staying, what pages they visit, all that stuff. Um, and not only where they're coming from, but physically where they're coming from, what city, what country they're coming from, and what other website they're coming in from, whether that's, you know, Facebook, Twitter, you know, email, something like that. Um, again, I'm digressing. But there's also site uh, Google Search Console, which is a way to understand how your website is performing in organic search results. So Google Search Console is what we're going to use to submit our sitemap to. And how we're going to do that is with the Site Kit by Google plugin. So I have that installed. It's very easy to install. If you want to check out that video, check it out. But that focuses on Google Analytics. Um, here with Site Kit already installed, we can see that we have a, a link to Search Console up here in the dashboard. Um, we can also access Search Console at any one of these links down here. And that's going to take us to that Google uh, search.google.com, which is um, associated with this website right now. So in here, under the sitemap section on the left-hand side, click on that, and this gives you the ability to type in the location of your sitemap. So we'll give it the location of that, our domain name, slash wp-sitemap.map.xml. We'll go ahead and submit that. And within a few seconds, um, this is just saying that Google will periodically process your sitemap and look for changes and they'll tell you if something goes wrong. So um, it was successfully submitted. And again, this comes back to the fact that when you write new posts, when you write new pages, publish new pages, all that stuff, that's going to be added to your sitemap. And then because you submitted your sitemap to Google, Google's going to know those changes have occurred and be able to uh, more easily index your pages. So we'll say we understand that. We got it. Uh, the sitemap was submitted on December 12th, it was a success and it discovered seven URLs. And we can see the same type of structure here. We have our pages sitemap, our child sitemap, post sitemap, um, and it's telling you how many URLs are within each one of those. So um, that should do it for this video, guys. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. If you got any value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.